Oh, hello. Well, what am I doing with these bananas? Well, I went to the circus last night, and the best thing there was the juggler. Oh, he was throwing all sorts of things up in the air at the same time. And he was, well, let me show you. See, the juggler was so terrific that I decided I want to be a juggler, too. It's not that much trouble. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, without further ado, the incredible juggling harbor master. Oh, just a minute, I'll get it. It's easy stuff. That can't be that hard. Oh, <laughs> I weren't supposed to do that. See, the juggler at the circus did it so well, too. Well, at least now I know how George felt. George and Theodore were going to help dock Nautilus, the Navy ship. George had never worked with Nautilus before, and he was very excited. There he is, said George. He looks really strong. Come on, Theodore. Uh, hello, Nautilus, said George quietly, not with his usual big, boomy voice at all. You see, George felt kind of, well, shy beside Nautilus, because Nautilus was so important. Hello, tugboats, said Nautilus. You ready? Ready, tooted George and Theodore. Quickly, they moved into position. I've always wanted to know what Navy ships do, said George. Well, replied Nautilus, I protect the oceans. Protect the oceans, repeated George. Oh, I'd like to do that. The tugboats moved in to dock Nautilus. All George could think about was what it would be like to be a Navy ship and protect the oceans. After George and Theodore had finished docking Nautilus, they headed back out into the harbor. Let's pretend we're Navy ships, George said suddenly, and protect the ocean. Okay, said Theodore right away. I'm going to be the good ship George, announced George. And I'm going to be the good ship uh, Theodore, announced Theodore. Begin the Navy patrol, good ship Theodore, whistled George. Beginning the Navy patrol, good ship George. Theodore whistled back. The tugs looked around to see if anything needed to be protected. Digby, the cable ship, was busy inspecting his cable along the shore. Follow me, called George. Theodore and George floated up beside Digby, acting big and powerful like Nautilus. Uh, find his kind of day, isn't it, said Digby. Yes, sir, said George. See, George decided that Navy ships always called everyone, sir. We're protecting the ocean, sir, continued George. Are you now, boys, said Digby. Well, that's, uh, that's just fine. That, that's really superior. Thank you, sir, said Theodore. And then he had to smile, because it sounded kind of funny calling Digby, sir. But George didn't look like he thought it was funny. George looked serious very serious. Well, said Digby, slowing down. This be my dock now. I think I'm protected pretty good from here on in, I think. Thanks. You're welcome, sir, said George. Uh, thanks again, called Digby. Very, very helpful. Yes, indeed. That was fun, said Theodore. What should we do now, George? Good ship, George, corrected George. You can go back to the dock. I still have more Navy stuff to do. Theodore didn't say anything, but he was beginning to wonder. Did George really think that he was a Navy ship? Well, after that, all George could think about was being a Navy ship. He was floating along a few days later, pretending he was protecting the ocean again. When who should he see but Nautilus? Nautilus, wait up, he called. Oh, hello there, George, said Nautilus, slowing down a little. Where are you going, asked George. On my ocean patrol, replied Nautilus. Can I come too, said George right away. 
I know all about being a Navy ship, and I've been practicing, and I really want to. Well, said Nautilus, okay, but stay close beside me. I will, said George. And do exactly what I say. Sure, said George. Nautilus blew his powerful horn and set off out of the harbor. And then George blew his whistle as loud as he could, just to make sure everyone saw that he was trying to be a real Navy ship too. In a short time, George and Nautilus were near Blanford, the bellboy who lives out past the edge of the harbor. That bellboy isn't floating straight, declared George. Should we tow him in? He's fine, said Nautilus with a smile in his voice. You're fine, George called to Blanford. Just then, a call came in for Nautilus over his special radio. What is it? asked George. Is, is it important? George was hoping this was going to be his big chance to go on a real Navy ship job. It is important, replied Nautilus. George, I would like you to go straight home to the harbor now. The harbor? repeated George, as if he hadn't heard right. But, but I want to go with you. It's not a job for a tugboat, said Nautilus, already turning away. But, I thought I was a Navy ship now, said George in a small voice. George slowly headed back to the big harbor. He felt terrible about having to go home. He really wanted to be a Navy ship like Nautilus. I know all about protecting things, he told himself. I could be a Navy ship. Then, out of the corner of his eye, George saw something. It was a fishing boat over by Cayley's Cove. Sure enough, Truro, the fishing trawler, was just starting to lower his big net into the water. That boat is dumping garbage into the ocean, said George. You see, from way over where George was floating, it looked like Truro's fishing net was a big pile of garbage. George glanced around. Nautilus was nowhere in sight. Now the Navy ship had told him to go straight home, but a boat was dumping garbage in the water. It's up to me to protect the ocean, said George. George began blowing his biggest whistle and making his most important Navy ship face as he roared towards Truro. Truro was just a small fishing trawler from a small cove, and the sight of a big harbor tugboat roaring towards him, blasting his whistle, made him scared. He quickly lowered the rest of his net and tried to float away from George. Stop right there, ordered George. You're coming with me. I'm taking you into the harbor, boomed George. Then he quickly tied his tow rope onto Truro. But, 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 blubbered Truro. Uh, I'm just a, a fishing troll. I, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a tripping trollfish. I mean, but it was no use trying to talk to George. You see, he really thought he was a Navy ship protecting the ocean. Poor Truro. The fishing trawler had never even seen the big harbor before. And now, here he was being pulled through it, backwards. All kinds of strange ships and boats, and who knows what else, were sailing all over the place, whistling and honking. It seemed very crowded and very noisy. And Truro was very frightened. What are you doing? asked Theodore. Hi, Theodore, cried George importantly. Is everything all right? called Theodore. Theodore thought Truro might have broken his propeller or something. Uh, can I help? I caught this boat dumping garbage over his side, announced George, right into the ocean. Well, 
Well, Theodore knew Truro, and he was very surprised the fishing trawler would ever do anything like that. Did you dump garbage in the water? Theodore asked. <laughs> no, sputtered Truro. I, 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 I was just g g going fishing. Theodore had an idea. Truro, he said softly, could you please raise your fishing net? Truro slowly hauled his fishing net back up. George, is that what you saw Truro dumping over his side? Theodore asked. It, it might have been, admitted George, but it looked like garbage. I guess, uh, I guess I didn't really see it so well. All right, George said to Truro, you can go. Th th Thanks, said Troro. Those were the best words he had heard all day. I was only trying to protect the ocean, he told Theodore at last. Well, Troro was pretty scared, said Theodore. Well, I didn't mean to scare him, he began to explain. I was only trying to be like a Navy ship. I guess, continued George, I guess I need to know a lot more stuff before I can really protect the ocean. Just then, they heard some loud honks and whistles. Poor Truro was trying to find his way out of the big harbor, but he was causing a big traffic jam. Suddenly, George took off towards Truro, looking very serious again. Uh-oh, thought Theodore. What's George doing now? Make way, rumbled George. George pulled up alongside Truro. I'm sorry I pulled you into the harbor, he said. And then, gently, very gently, George buttoned onto Truro. Let me help you out of the harbor, he said. No, you're not a Navy ship, Truro said happily. But you're sure a great tugboat. Maybe there are a few things I have to learn before I can be a juggler. Well, I better pick these bananas up. Oh, my, my, my. Well, what am I gonna do with all these bananas anyway? Oh, it looked so easy. I'm gonna give it one more try. Oh. Mm. Well, there is one thing that I do know how to do with a banana. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. I love bananas. Theodore, he's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore, likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Vodak, Hank and George, and the harbor master too. Oh, Theodore.